This video describes the principal and practical application of the Alibibrio Fischeri ecotoxicity test and discusses the use of bioassays in risk assessment in general. Alibibrio Fischeri is a bioluminescent marine bacterium which is widely used in ecotoxicity tests. Luminescent bacteria produce light, which can be measured with a luminometer. Toxic pollutants inhibit the metabolism of the luminescent bacteria, resulting in a loss in light production. The test has been shown to accurately demonstrate the toxicity of various types of pollutants. In addition, it has been found to correlate with toxicity tests conducted with higher species such as fish. The test is also quick and cost-effective to do. The luminescent bacteria test was originally developed for water samples, but a kinetic version of the test has also been made, for example, for sediment and soil samples or contaminated water samples such as wastewater. Water suspensions are prepared of solid samples, such as sediment and soil samples. By mixing the sample in water with a mass ratio of, for example, 10%, or 20%. The pH of the samples should be close to neutral, meaning between 6 and 8.5. The pH value of the sample is adjusted if necessary. An environment that is too acidic or alkaline may affect the light production of the bacteria. The samples should also have enough oxygen. Since Alibibrio fischeri is a marine bacterium, the salinity should be adjusted by adding sodium chloride to the samples. The sodium chloride concentration should be 2%. Bacteria kits are available for the test. The freeze-dried bacteria are stored in the freezer. The bacterial suspension is prepared by mixing a diluent solution with the bacteria. After this, the bacteria are allowed to stabilize first at about 4 degrees for at least half an hour and then at 15 degrees with an incubator. The tests should be done on the same day. Measurements can be taken directly from the samples or dilution series of the samples can be prepared. Measuring different dilutions enables the calculation of various toxicity values such as EC50 or the lowest effect concentration. The sample size is small, only 200 to 500 microliters. Parallel dilution series of each sample are prepared. The sample temperature is allowed to stabilize to 15 degrees before measuring the luminescence. Control and reference samples are taken to ensure the test works. Pure 2% sodium chloride solution is used as the control. A toxic substance whose toxicity is known, such as dichlorophenol, is used as the reference. The light output of the bacteria is measured with a luminometer. A sample cuvette is placed in the luminometer which dispenses the bacterial suspension into the cuvette. The luminometer starts to measure the amount of light as soon as the bacteria have been added, and the light output can be monitored in the measuring software. The amount of light is re-measured after the contact time. The contact time is typically 30 minutes. The maximum light output is reached a couple seconds after adding the bacteria. The light output remains even in the control sample, whereas in the toxic sample, the amount of light immediately starts to decrease. In environmental samples, the amount of light is usually lower than in the control solution due to the natural color of the samples. But the shape of the curve shows whether the light output decreases due to toxicity. The luminometer displays the results as light units. The inhibition percentage is calculated from the results that is the reduction in light output during the contact time compared to the starting point. The amount of light can change slightly in the control sample too due to natural reasons. This is taken into account using a correction factor calculated from the results of the control sample. The EC50 value can be calculated from the sample dilutions meaning the concentration at which light output has fallen by 50%. The results of the dilution series also show the no effect concentration at which no loss in light output is observed. The results can be utilized when assessing the overall impact of pollutants, in addition to chemical concentration analysis and possible ecological surveys. In addition to chemical concentration analysis, ecotoxicity tests provide information about the combined effects and bioavailability of pollutants. Bioassays 
should always be done with multiple species and trophic levels because interspecific sensitivity to pollutants may vary. For example, the toxicity of wastewater is usually tested with acute water flea, algae and bacteria tests. In addition, there are tests for assessing long-term effects. Typical tests for soil samples include earthworm tests and seed germination and growth tests. The use of bioassays is increasingly recommended in environmental risk assessment and emissions monitoring, particularly when the emission or leaching consists of multiple different substances and not all the compounds are known.